Hey guys, welcome back. So it's time for another Fusion 360 tutorial and today we're going to be talking about the timeline and this is one of the coolest features I've seen in Fusion 360 and it's actually extremely powerful but it can be a little finicky. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, so before we start this, um, let me preface with the fact that I have not tested this out beforehand. Um, I've done this in previous files and stuff like that but on this file specifically, I haven't tested any of this, so um, things are probably going to go wrong, but that's okay because that'll just give us an opportunity to um, solve those. Okay, so now when I say the timeline, um, what I'm referring to is this section down here at the bottom. So basically what this is, it, well, it's a timeline, but it's a list of all of the actions you've taken in this file so far. So as we can see right here, the last thing I did was this chamfer and to put on this little edge right here. Um, so if I drag the timeline behind that, you can see that that chamfer is no longer there. And how you drag it is just this little um, black or dark gray bar here. You can just grab it and drag through and position yourself further back in the timeline, which can be very handy. It'll, it allows us to modify what we've done already very quickly and a lot more easily than most programs would. So like take this face right here for example, say that we wanted, we didn't want that to be quite as high as I have it here. Um, in other programs you'd have to go in and you know either undo until you got to this point or you'd go in and like shave some of this off and it can be a real big pain in the butt. Now actually there's two ways to do this in Fusion. Um, the first is just simply with a press pull and most of the time Fusion's pretty good about recognizing what you want to keep done so I can drag this down and it looks like our fillet went away but I think that'll come back yep right there so um, it knows what we want to do there but another way we can do that is we can find where we extruded this um, and down in the timeline you'll see these um, little boxes with an arrow pointing up that's the extrude icon so as you come down to the timeline and hover over these it will highlight the objects that are affected by that specific action. And another really cool feature is if you come and click on the object, it'll actually put um, these little bars underneath which object and which action those are a part of. So right here you can see that that is a part of body one and it was a part of this action. So I can double click on this action and it'll bring me back in time to when I was extruding this up. And now I can do all sorts of things with this. Like I can bring it down here, I'll hit OK, and then it will go back through, perform these actions again, and leave us with hopefully what we wanted. So as you can see, this is very, very powerful. And you can also do this with things like um, fillets and chamfers. Um, so like if I click that edge there, you'll see right here is where we chamfered that. And I can come in and um, do a bigger chamfer if I'd like and then it'll come back through and reperform all of the actions. Now earlier when I said it can be finicky, um, I'm mostly referring to if you do, if you change an action that um, influenced another action later, sometimes Fusion cannot perform the same action down the timeline. So if that happens, you will get um, either a red action down here, like the whole background of it will be red and it'll pop up errors, and that's just basically saying it can't do anything uh, of that action. Sometimes it'll be yellow saying that parts of it it couldn't do or just giving you some sort of warning. But the nice thing is is you can come back in and go to those steps and figure out what you want to do there and proceed forward. So this is something that is very very useful. And now I may have mentioned this when um, I was doing the sketches tutorial but the timeline also works for sketches. So if we come back to this sketch here and say that we wanted to change one of the features we can actually double click on it or we can right click and go edit sketch and as you can see on the timeline it takes us clear back to the first thing we did which was creating this sketch and so now we can actually edit this and um, when as soon as we finish it will run back through all the steps and put us back where we were so I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit to make that smaller um, now we'll see if that messes with it at all Okay, so I'll go ahead and hit stop sketch. And nope, it looks like it had, um, it didn't have any issues running through that. So that's very good. 
Let's see if we can force it to have an issue because I'm I'm gonna bet that we can. So I'll double click and I'm not sure why that's still highlighted there. I've never actually had that happen, but whatever. So I bet we've done enough to this face right here that I bet if we messed with it, it would throw some sort of errors. So let's do that. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna actually do that. Um, these tiny spaces here that don't really allow for um, nice fillets and chamfers are usually the culprits when um, dealing with errors like that. So let's go ahead and hit stop. And yep, right there, we ran into an issue with the chamfer right here. And actually it looks like it was the chamfer on this guy. So that is interesting. So we'll double click on that. And it, it had a real issue with that. Okay, and it looks like we just went in too far on that one. Not what I was expecting to break, but I have it works. So as you can see, it was broken, and now we can do this and say, okay, that doesn't work anymore, but we can live with this, so we'll hit okay. And now everything is good, and we don't have any red or yellow down here. And we've completely changed the ge geometry of this by just changing a few things that we did very early on in the process. And that is something that it is extremely hard to do in other modeling software. So just experiment a little bit with this timeline. Um, just about anything you throw down here can be messed with, um, even like these move things. And you know we can even throw things into the timeline that weren't there before. So say I come back to when I moved this, um, and I just wanted to put a little hole right in here. And once again, I don't know if this is gonna work, but we will we will see. Uh, I'm actually just gonna use that, and then we'll just create a little guy there and move it on down, cut it, and then we'll come on back. And see now, I've got a hole there. I mean, I could add that hole right here, but um, you can see that we can go back in the timeline and do things and then bring it back forward. So that's really cool. And there are some specific use cases where um, that is extremely useful. Well, I hope this has been helpful, you guys. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments. And if you have any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them down there. Um, and then I think I'll leave this one at that. Next time, we are going to talk about round extrusion and patterns. So that'll be an exciting one. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.